Hey guys and welcome to this video. Today we're going to talk about how you can fetch dynamic content from a Google Sheet, display it inside of a gallery inside of Messenger, but also save the responses that the users make and then be able to save those responses to custom fields so you can use them later on. If we take a look at the flow, you will see that I just have a few steps inside, right? So let me actually delete a few of the necessary steps. So the first thing that you need to do is to fetch the data from a Google Sheet, right? So the way to do this is just by inserting an action block. From this action block, we are going to the integrations tab, going to Google Sheets. And from the actions, we are just going to select the action, get multiple rows. Then we are going to select our spreadsheet. So let's go with the HC template in this case, then go for the lead magnet information, and then just save all the data inside that lead magnet inside of a JSON custom field. Let's do the data custom field. You can also press the button preview matched rows to see if the data is being prefetched correctly. So let's do that real quick. And here you will see that we have all the available columns. So we have type, we have lead magnet, lead magnet description, URL, lead magnet image, and you will see the name and all the other information as well. So the information is being pulled in correctly. And now we are going to save all of this information inside of a JSON custom field. And this allows us to display the contents of the Google Sheet dynamically inside of gallery cards. So the next step would be to save this Google Sheet action. And then from here, we are going to continue to a new step. And that new step will be a regular text block, but inside we are going with a for each step. Inside of this for each step, we first need to select our JSON custom field that we save the data into. So let's go with data. And from here, we will be able to pull in all the available data that we have inside of this Google Sheet. So the way to do this is by going towards the variables overview. We can go for the for each item. We're going to select for the sample data, we're going to select our custom field. In this case is the action one block that we have. So if we go back, you will actually see that we can also rename this. And we're now going towards the for each step. We are now going to see this action block named as such. So what we are going to do now, we're going to 44 each step, and now we're going with the sample data. And you will see that we have the lead magnet information. From here, all the available columns that we have inside of the Google Sheet are now being displayed inside for us to choose from. So for the first part, the lead magnet image, right? we can go with the lead magnet image column. We can just press save. And there we go. We can do the same for all the other ones. So for the title, we can go for the for each item, then select our simple data again, and we can go with the lead magnet name. We can just press save. And then for the subtitle, we can do something like a description, right? So we are going for the for each item step again, going to select the sample data and then we're going with the lead magnet description and what this does basically is generating a gallery card so we have an image we have a title and we have a lead magnet description so the next part that we want to implement is to add a button so the user can actually download the lead magnet right so the way to do this is by just by pressing the button and let's create a download now or download button. There we go. But the issue is because of this for each step is dynamic. So it displays all the available lead magnets inside of this Google Sheet. So if you add more, more will be displayed as well. But how can you actually capture what the response is for this particular user? It is pretty simple because there is a good 
a system field or a good selection that we can choose from. So if we go back towards the bottom, we go with the when this button is pressed step. If we select the next step, we are going for the first available options in the new step. So we're going towards the select. So this means that whatever option the user chooses, whether it's a seven figure income within 90 days or a chatbot cheat sheet, that will be saved inside the select field. And if we take a look, we can access the selected item from the system field select item. So this gives a ton of value. So how this works, let's press save. You will now see on the download step, you will have a select button, select icon, right? So what you can do now is you can save any action that you want to. So for example, if I want to save which lead magnet type they downloaded or they choose to download, right? We can do so as well. That would be another action step. There we go. For that action step, we're going to set a variable. I already prepared a variable called lead magnet. This one. Now comes the interesting part. So now we can save the value. Because we saved the choice of the user inside that select field, we can now use that actually. So if we go to the variables overview, just start typing in select, right? Here we go. We can now add the item because every single value is stored within that item. But now we need to have an additional parameter because item stores all the available information from this entire row. So let's say they choose the first lead magnet. It will store the entire information. So the name, the description, the URL and the lead magnet image. But what if we only want to have the type in this case? It's pretty easy because if we take a look and just preview everything that we got right now. So let's just save this as is for now. And instead, we are just going to display all the available information. We're just going with a regular text block. Let's choose a text and let's just select the custom field select and then the sample data for item. If we take a look now, let's publish and let's preview this flow. You will see that all the data has been pulled in. As you can see, we have two different kinds of lead magnets cor correlating with the lead magnets that we set up inside of this overview, inside the sheet. But now we want to display the selection that we made, right? So the way to do this is by going just preview any step. So let's go with download this one. And you will get a JSON variable overview of the entire payload. So this might seem overwhelming, but we can actually use this to store any data that we want to inside of a custom field. If we take a look at this JSON overview, you will see that we have certain keys, which will correlate with the columns inside of the Google Sheet. And then we have the value that comes with this column that we chose, right? So as you can see, if we choose the second one, so let's say download for this one, you will see it changed the type to two. You will see that the lead magnet name has been changed to chatbot cheat sheet because we selected the second lead magnet, right? And we can use all of this to save any answer that we want to. So the way this works is if we go back inside the sheet itself, and now we want to store the lead magnet type, for example, we can easily do so. So let's select the select system field. Basically, this is a temporary field, right? Where we stored all the information of the user's choice. We are going with the key item name, but now we want to store, if we take a look here, we want to store the type, right? So the type in this case, the first one was one and the other one is two. So also this is dynamic, but if we add this part towards the, let's just copy this towards the item. So we have a dollar sign dot item, and then we are going with another dot and just paste in this specific column Google sheet. This is everything you need to save this type. So the lead magnet type that the user chose inside of a custom field of your choosing. So if we press save, 
this is all that is needed. So if we want to store the URL of this uh, chosen uh, lead magnet, right? Then we can easily do so as well. So if we go back, you will see that we have another column name, lead magnet name. We have a lead magnet description. And we also have a URL here, right? So we want to store this URL inside of a custom field as well. So easily done. We're just going to set another set a variable. We're going to save this to a custom field. I believe I have one called URL. Let's just use this one. And then we're going with the same select system field again. We're going with select. We're going with the item again. And as you can see at the bottom with the JSON path, we have $.item. And if we take a look at the messenger conversation, we now only need to add in the URL because that correlates with the column inside of the Google Sheet. So let's do that. So we have dollar sign dot item. Then we have another dot URL. And then we can just save this. And we saved the URL. So the next step could be, if we take a look here, send a message. And we could say something like this. Now we can add the button. So the button could be download now. And then the next step would be to open a website and then to fill in the custom field that we just saved the URL in. So in this case, it could be the URL. And let's see if this works, yes or no. So let's publish the flow. Let's preview it again. And let's see if this entire flow that we just created on the spot works yes or no so let's press preview and then from here let's press the first one prepare the download link for you mark just press the button below to claim your copy so if everything goes well if i press the download now button it should go to the url that i set up inside the google sheet which goes directly towards my own website so let's test it out let's say download now and you see that it goes directly towards my website. So if we choose the other one, so let's say download the chapel cheat sheet instead. If I press the button now, download now, it should go towards Google in this case. So let's see if that works as well. And there you have it. So with the Google Sheet integration you have alongside with UChat, you can not only dynamically display data, but you can also store it inside of a basically a temporary system field called select, where you can then store the user's choice, save the specific data that you want from the Google Sheet, like the lead magnet type in this case, or the URL inside of your own custom fields and then display it towards the user. It's a really easy process and as you can see, it's a completely dynamic flow with just four available blocks and you can add as many lead magnets in this case as you want to, but you can also do this with FAQ sections and so much more. So if you enjoyed this video, consider dropping a like because it will help us reach more people and let them discover the power of UChat and chatbot marketing automations. And if you want to get notified about more videos going live on our channel, press the subscribe button and the bell notification to the right of it. For now, have a great day, take care and talk soon.